So roughly five years ago, I started learning how to become a dungeon master and learning how to play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. I was in a friend group where nobody wanted to DM, but they wanted to play D&D. Nobody wanted to do it, so I said, hey, screw it, I'm gonna get the Dungeon Master's Guide, I'm gonna read it, I'm going to run d and I'll see you on Monday. Since then, I've made countless mistakes, countless TPKs, countless fights with my players, and Honestly, you should learn from my mistakes. So in this video, I wanted to go through some of those mistakes and uh, hope you learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Mistake number one, I think, is never being upfront about my players. Instead of saying, hey, let's play D&D on Monday, I could have done something like, hey, uh, we're going to be playing Curse of Strahd on Monday or, you know, some other Thing to clarify and narrow down because the imagination is a funny thing and once you leave certain things to the imagination things get misinterpreted and um, you don't really know what to do so here's an example are there any key features about your world are dragonborn nearly extinct are asmr common folk is the political structure really well structured or is it just a wild west type of chaos feeling Whatever the answers to these questions are, they don't matter. But your answers to these questions will shape how you want to run your game. And don't worry about it if you change your mind down the road. You see, like, maybe that one shot will become a multi-year campaign, and maybe that multi-year campaign will become something like Critical Role, for example. This was probably my biggest mistake because I'd run into problems where players didn't really know what to expect, so they made a meme character for a what's supposed to be serious. There was really no direction. I didn't really know what I was doing. My players didn't really know what I was doing. Everything was essentially a complete mess. Mistake number two is not having enough information. Let's say you're running an adventure and your players need information, but not just any information, key pieces of information to really understand what the heck is going on around them. Between you and me, we want ideally the players to come up with a solution on their own. We want them to think things true. The truth is they won't. They probably won't even think of the correct questions to ask how no matter how simple they are so try to give them blatantly the most information and the best kind of information that they can get don't overload them but if it gets to a point where things are happening for specific reasons and your players are misinterpreting you might as well just straight out tell them what is happening you can also accomplish this by having them make skill checks which is also good. Most of my players don't take notes, and honestly, I don't think it's a big deal. My players came to have fun, not to study for a test. Now, whenever my players forget something, I just tell them, because if their character knows, then the player should know, because your players have their own lives, and they're probably not thinking about their D&D character 24-7, so might as well just tell them what their character knows. So mistake number three was not adjusting my encounters. I'll put a, a one take that I did over here, where basically I talked about how I balanced my encounters over the many years. It took many years to get to this point. So the fact that I'm like just giving this out for free, it, it's, it's ridiculous. But I'm still learning and adjusting with every encounter now. Encounter generators like Cobalt Fight Club, RIP, and D&D Beyond, they don't really make a hard encounter hard or make a deadly encounter particularly difficult. Long story short, you won't know if your encounter is balanced until you actually run it. And once that encounter happens, you have to balance the encounter based on what the players are doing. So don't feel bad if you have to give your BBEG less health or you want to give them an extra ability, for example, or limiting certain legendary actions. And mistake number four, I have to say, was having super long sessions. I remember before when we started playing DD, I was so gung ho about having all day sessions where literally eight to 10 hours per day, we would sit around and play DD and have probably the wildest time ever. I don't regret it one bit, but now looking back, it was probably a really bad idea. Because when you're in it, you would think, how would that suck? I'm sitting with my friends, we're playing D&D, a game that we all love. And it was super, super fun. 
until we all burnt out. There will come a time where you don't want to play D&D anymore. That is perfectly fine. Maybe it becomes too stressful to run. Maybe you just lost interest in the hobby. Maybe things are happening way too fast and the job of being a dungeon master becomes super overwhelming to you. And especially with an all day session, things are happening super, super fast and you can't really plan for that. And overall, during my time running these all day sessions, it was sloppy. It was really tough. So find that sweet spot where players still get excited by the end of the session and have something to look forward to in the next session. And speaking of DM things that are super stressful to your players, make sure to show them this video over here where I talk about 10 DM things that I really wish players know. Make them understand our pain.